Hi, I'm Jason Halliker, and welcome to Muskie Fishing 101, the all-inclusive how-to video designed to teach you how to have a safe and successful muskie fishing trip. Today's video is going to cover five main topics. The tools you will need, rods, reels, and baits, muskie biology, specific fishing techniques, and how to safely release your muskie. All right, we got our gear. Most importantly, we got our lunch, and we're ready to head out onto the water. This may not be the most exciting topic of the video, but it is the most important, both for your safety as well as the muskie. First of all, most muskie fishing takes place aboard boats, so be sure to visit the DJF boating page on our website. And of course, you always want to wear your life vest. So let's talk about some specific tools you will need. By far, the most important tool is a large net. I know they're cumbersome to carry, but these make life so much easier when unhooking fish. With these nets, you have plenty of room to take your time and work slowly and carefully, all while keeping the fish wet and breathing. Musky flopping in the bottom of the boat with sharp hooks in their mouths makes for a scary situation, both for you and the fish. Second in importance, you need the proper release tools. Hook resistant gloves are a must. These fish are strong and can swing hooks into your hands when you try to unhook them. They also have incredibly sharp teeth and gill rakers. These gloves have saved me from being punctured on numerous occasions. It's also important to have long pliers, hook cutters, and jaw spreaders. On occasion when these fish are deep hooked, it can be hard to navigate their teeth and the bait to remove the hooks. In these cases, I find it best to cut the hooks to get the bait out of the muskie's mouth and then remove the remainder of the hook once you can see what you're doing. These baits have big, thick hooks, so quality hook cutters are important. You can also bring a measuring tape, a length board, and a camera, of course, so you can document your catch. To weigh your fish, you can bring a scale, but remember it is best to weigh fish while in the net. Muskie are heavy fish, so you want to avoid hanging them from the scale by their mouth. Alright guys, the tools are important and all, but let's talk about the fun stuff. The rods, reels, and baits you will need to chase muskie. First, let's talk about rod and reels. There are all sorts of rod and reels on the market, so I won't get into too many specifics. Personally, I like to use a bait casting reel with a 6-4 gear ratio and an 8-foot medium heavy or heavy rod with fast action. A long rod is important for casting distance and the figure 8, which we will talk about later. With this setup, you can easily cast and retrieve most baits on the market. If you are going to spend the money, spend it on a good reel. These baits are heavy and cheap reels can wear out quickly. I use an 80 pound braided line with an 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. You can also use steel leaders if you like. As far as musky baits are concerned, there are a lot to choose from, but most of them fall into five categories. Inline spinners, crank baits, soft plastics, jerk baits, and topwater baits. Musky fishing is very seasonal, and certain baits are more productive than others depending on the time of year you are fishing. In the spring, after the spawn, inline spinners and topwater baits can be very productive. Both of these baits are easy for the novice angler to use. A straight retrieve with either of these baits will have the muskies looking to chase. Changing the speed of your retrieve can also be productive. In the fall and winter, larger baits like soft plastics and crankbaits work well. These are also effective using a straight retrieve, but muskies love to eat a bait that looks wounded. So working them erratically through different depths in the water column using a jigging technique will increase your catch rate. Finally, there are jerk baits. These type of baits typically run just under the surface and dart all over the place. Muskie love these baits no matter what season you are fishing. It can be a little challenging to get the walk the dog cadence down, so be patient. Practice makes perfect.
Regardless of what bait you choose, when you set the hook, you want to pull on the rod in a sweeping motion as hard as possible. Muskie have very hard mouths, so a firm hook set is required to keep them on your line. Also, when fighting your fish, keep your rod tip down, angling away from the direction the muskie is facing, and keep your line tight. Muskies have a tendency to jump and shake their heads, which can dislodge your bait. By following these tips, you can keep your fish hooked up and in the net. Muskies can be challenging to catch, but learning about their biology and life histories can help improve your odds. Muskie are not native to the waters of the Commonwealth. They are stocked to create a trophy fishery in some of our impoundments and rivers. Muskie like to live in deeper waters, so anglers should target the slower, deeper pools and cast around woody debris, boulders, weed lines, and drop-offs. They like to eat minnows, suckers, and even birds and small mammals. In Virginia, muskie spawn from the end of March into April when the water is 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. During the spawn, they can be very challenging to catch and most anglers avoid this time of the year. Muskies are cool water fish and become stressed easily when water temperatures exceed 75 degrees. Anglers should consider limiting muskie fishing when water temperatures reach 75. At this temperature, even fish that swim away strongly are stressed and may die after being released. The best time of year to fish for muskie in Virginia is May through early July and October through early March. Muskies are nicknamed the fish of 10,000 casts for a reason. They are challenging to catch. However, hooking into one of these big fish can be quite rewarding. Muskie are curious in nature and will often follow your lure back to the boat, inspecting it carefully. Once your lure is boatside, you can stick your rod tip in the water and make a large circle or figure eight to entice the muskie into biting. It is one of the most exciting ways to catch a fish. By varying the speed or depth in your figure eight, you can oftentimes convince the muskie to bite. All right, so we've caught a muskie. Now what? If you're like me, your adrenaline is pumping, your hands are shaking, calm down. The fish will be fine in your net. Gather your tools, take a breath, and then go ahead and work on the fish. Remember to use your gloves to protect your hands. Using the long-handled pliers, grab the shank of the hook. Oftentimes, giving the hook a quick, firm shake will dislodge it. To hold your fish, using one hand, grab the caudal peduncle, which is located just in front of the tail. With the other hand, cradle the muskie under the stomach. This hold helps you control the muskie's tail while providing support. Take a quick photo, a quick measurement, and release them. If they seem a little tired, you can hold them in the water by the caudal peduncle until they regain their equilibrium. A gentle push will often get them swimming. On behalf of the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, I'd like to thank you for tuning into this instructional video. For more information on muskie, please visit our website. Thanks for watching, and remember to go outdoors, Virginia.